Hey guys, look what I have this time. This is the magic fortune telling box. It's magical, it's mystical, and it holds all the answers to life. In fact, let's just ask it a question. Uh, magic box, do you hold all the answers to life? And what we do is we turn this crank. Hey, out pops an answer. What does it say? Don't ask what you already know the answer to be. That's just eerie. Uh, should we ask another one? Let's ask something uh, a little bit more general, wide appeal. Uh, is true love really attainable? Turn the crank again. Yep, took a while, but it works. <laughs> is true love really attainable? There's an app for that. <laughs> Okay, now comes the demonstration part. You get to ask the magic fortune-telling box a question. Okay, think of a yes or no question to ask it. You got it? Okay, ask it, and we'll see what the fortune-telling box says. It says, yes, but only if it doesn't involve mayonnaise. <laughs> Of course, you're probably asking yourself, how does the fortune-telling box really know the answers to my questions? Well, it is a bit mystical. <laughs> well, no, actually, here's the box. Okay, now it's got a crank on it. Now, what that crank does is this bottom part opens up. Ooh, secret panel in there. And that lets you load in cards. And these are all business cards, uh, blank stock, that I have printed all sorts of answers on. All right, well, I'm going to just start by making a simple box using half-inch MDF. And so you can see what I've done here is I've cut my pieces to uh, uh, fit together like this. And I haven't cut down the length yet because I'm really not sure what that's going to be. I've got a business card here, and I can kind of see this is going to be right. And I kind of put the spring in there and see how that's going to fit along with the rollers. So what I need to do now is when I take this apart is I need to cut a bottom piece for this that I can remove to replace the cards. And what I'm going to do is just cut a groove on each of these pieces and use quarter inch MDF for the bottom. One thing to notice is that I didn't go to the edge of this one. I just dropped it down on the router and cut the groove out there because I didn't want that groove to show on the outside. So anyways, this is going to fit together like that. Now, this third piece, because remember this is the bottom that I'm going to be making that's going to slide out. I have cut a little bit, well, <laughs> it's all falling apart, but I've cut it right to one of those grooves. So this front piece is a little bit shorter than the back piece and I don't know if that made any sense whatsoever. <laughs> okay so here's the box and you can see that you know I've just got all, all got it sitting there obviously I haven't cut the bottom off this is the part that's going to slide open. I've got the top the quarter inch MDF cut to size and I've also cut this is going to be that little pressure plate that goes in and slides against the rollers. Right now I'm just boring some shallow holes using a Forstner bit and my drill press like that. And this is that front panel or the back panel that will hold these springs. And so I just wanted to have a hole that I can glue this into. Now I'm just drilling some small holes, some shallow holes on the pressure plate. While I'm waiting for that epoxy to dry, I thought I could go ahead and cut out the rollers. And what I'm going to use for that is, this is a washing machine discharge hose that I picked up at the hardware store for, you know, a couple of dollars for, you know, a one foot section. And uh, the reason why I picked it is because it's, uh, you know, it's got a good grip to it. It, it feels kind of tacky, it's got a rubbery feeling to it. So anyways, I'm just going to cut these down to, uh, you know, a couple of pieces on the bandsaw. There we go. Now that's the same size as this pressure plate, which is, you know, just a little bit bigger than the size of a business card. 
And just because I was impatient, I went ahead and glued this strike plate. Okay, well that held together pretty nicely. You can see that that's going to fit in like so. So before I glue anything down now, the next step is going to be uh, to drill holes where these rollers will go. All right, let me see if I can make this kind of clear what's going on here. I've got, I'll take it apart gently. Okay, so I've got my two rollers. This roller, I've stuck a 5 8 inch dowel in it with extending out. Now that's going to go into these bottom holes like that, and it'll just roll freely. Okay, so now the top roller, this is the one that's going to have the crank on it. I've put in the 5 8 inch dowel, and then I've drilled a hole and I've glued in a, well I haven't glued it in yet, but I will glue this in a smaller, a thinner dowel. So, and, oh, and then I've got the holes, the shallow holes drilled on all these, including this one, except I've also drilled it all the way through like that. I hope that's making some sense. Okay, so now if I were to assemble this, okay, so it would go together about like that, and <laughs> it's tricky. Okay, so get it kind of lined up like so and work with it. Okay, so there they, they're in like that. What I've done for this cranking mechanism is I've just taken a thin piece of wood and I put a hole on this side to attach it to that dowel that's sticking out. I cut a thicker dowel here and I ran a bolt through it with a lock nut on this side so that it can turn freely. So the idea here is that I will, once this is glued together, I can glue this crank on like that and that's how it will turn. <laughs> I hope that sort of made sense. Now of course here's the back side with the springs that will go on there and press up against that roller like so. Well, this is a case of the best laid plans of mice and men. Uh, this isn't really working out the way that I wanted it to. Uh, I'm going to still try to make it work. I don't know if it's going to work perfectly, but, you know, maybe somebody out there has a really brilliant idea and can share it. But I'm going to go ahead and uh, show you where my train of thought is right now. All right, so what I've done is I just kind of dry assembled it. I've got it held together with a clamp real lightly uh, just to test it out to see, you know, how it would work out. And obviously this is supposed to push up like that, which works fine with just one. Now, the problems that I've been encountering is the first thing is this rubber uh, hose really doesn't grip the paper the way I thought it did when I kind of just tested it out on my hand. You know, that worked out pretty well. Once I got them in here, I found out that it was just slipping. It wasn't really working very well. So I thought, well, <clears throat> maybe I could try some slick cards. <clears throat> These are my business cards, and they've got a slick surface, but in a way, those slick surface is, is even worse. So that was out. Uh, I tried putting a single point of contact like that, and that sort of worked out a little bit. The one thing I tried out that has seemed to work better than anything else is to eliminate this bottom roller. So right now, let me see if you can see this. Let me just take this apart. Okay, so I've taken off this bottom roller and it seems to work. Of course, this just kind of, you know, doesn't really fit right, but that helps. Next thing I did is I took a sheet of 60 grit sandpaper and I glued it on to that rubber piece. And that's actually gripping it pretty well. Okay, so we've got that in there like so. Then as I was rolling the paper out, I know this is really boring, isn't it? This, this is this is great video right here. So <laughs> anyways, so I was rolling these out and it's grabbing several of them at a time because these also kind of stick together. Um, I really am not sure what I'm doing at this point, but what I did do is I figured out that if I take the top piece and I put a little piece of rubber on here, I've got this uh, 
I don't know, it's rubbery stuff that I use for my pond to, I got it to hold the, the base of it in there. Anyways, it's got an adhesive back on it and it's pretty sticky. So <laughs> what I did is I took the board, I angled it, okay, there's a slight angle there, and I put the rubber on there. So when the cards come out, if two cards are coming up, the idea being that the rear card will grab onto that rubber piece and then the top one will slide out. Let me set this back up and I'll kind of show you how it's working. All right, so here it is clamped up and again, I've just got this single roller on there with the sandpaper and now I can push, you know, a bunch of cards down in there like that. Now if you watch, when, well, let me put a board there. Okay, so if I stop that, see it just grabs a whole bunch of them. So. And I've got this rubber piece at the angle there, and I think if I align it, you know, kind of just perfectly right where they should come out, there's one piece. And hopefully a second one comes out. Well, sort of. <laughs> but, yeah, it's kind of working, so I think I'm going <laughs> to gonna go with that. Yeah, well, live and learn. I just cut this molding piece using an OG bit on my router and then just, you know, cut it down on the table saw. So this will wrap around the base just to give it a little bit of decoration. Uh, I gotta figure out where I'm gonna cut these 45 degree angles. And it also serves another purpose is on this uh, sliding panel that comes out. I want the molding to attach to it so that it will you'll have something to pull it out when you want to replace the cards and here it is all glued up I've got all the molding on there and this front piece is the one that pulls out so I only glued it on that one edge so it kind of makes a you know, nice little hidden compartment uh, and I've glued this top piece back on and I think everything is about set where it needs to be now I'm gonna go ahead and paint it before I glue in the crank and with that, the box is completely done. I've painted it and I've put the crank on it. And the cards are these business cards. You can buy them in sheets and then just run them through your printer. Come up with all sorts of wacky and fun answers. I came up with uh, great ones like, uh, you should ask David Hasselhoff. Or, uh, that would be an epic fail, dude. And just trying to be hip with the kids, you know, uh, you will never know. But anyways, I came up with a whole bunch of these. Uh, we can try it one more time. Think of a yes or no question. Okay, you got it in your head? Ask the box. Okay, I'm going to turn the crank. Here comes your answer. What does it say? What would Chuck Norris do? God, it's just eerie, this box. It just holds all of the answers. Thanks for watching this video, guys. Uh, this project really kind of pulls together really what woodworking is. It's just coming up with an idea and just trying to figure out a way to do it. Uh, didn't work out perfectly, but in the end I got it done and you can get anything done that you really set your mind to. Uh, let's turn the box, the crank one more time and see what the box has to say. Mm -hmm.